So this is Clapham Common Bandstand. And whenever we talk about women's safety, particularly in London, this is where my mind always goes. It's probably where a lot of women's minds go to after the disappearance and the murder of Sarah Everard. Now, this became almost a symbol for women's safety and the whole issue around it. And almost a year on exactly, we're now hearing of another horrific case involving a Metropolitan Police officer, serial rapist, David Carrick. Now we're here today, we're gonna to speak to some women around Clapham. We're gonna go for a walk to Brixton, around a mile. And as we go, we're just gonna see what women think. We're just going to speak to them about whether they trust the police and whether anything has changed since then. Do you have trust in, in the police as a woman? Um, to some degree, yes. I would still, if I was in danger, I would still go to the police. But um, just, I think that would just be my kind of knee-jerk knee reaction. Uh, but yes, uh, it still plays on my mind in terms of should you approach, should you not. One police officer or few police officers really make it bad for other police officers. They are good police officers who are really dedicated to their work and protecting community. Not all of them are bad. One bad egg or a few do ruin it for the majority, but I don't think that's just with the police. People do, you know, abuse their authority mm. and, you know, use being behind your uniform, being behind, you know, these platforms to abuse, you know, vulnerable victims. And it's unfortunate, but it's not something that's new and it's not something that is happening just today. So bringing it back to women's safety, I definitely think there can always be, you know, opportunity for change. I can't look at that pond without thinking about the divers, divers in it, searching for Sarah Everard in March 2021. How do you feel about the Metropolitan Police? I would still sort of, I would still go up to a police officer. I would feel safer if it was a female police officer, um, but I would, I would still go up to them, but obviously, the worst did happen with Sarah Everard, and that is obviously something that continually plays on our minds, especially living in Brixton. I just don't tend to put myself in situations where, like, like the walking home or whatever in the dark, which is then unfair because you should be able to feel that you trust the police and be safe in your local area. But Has your opinion changed in light of recent no, stories? No, I think I knew it was happening, I just didn't know how prevalent, um, but I wouldn't say I was shocked which is, I suppose, quite bad. If I had to call them, I would, but I wouldn't want to. You can't fix something like that because it's broken. You have to kind of restart, you have to rebuild it, or, you know, how many bad apples are there? This is Lambeth Town Hall. We're in the heart of Brixton now. Brixton Station's literally just down there. And whilst I'm here, I've arranged to speak to Ksenia Gorenstein. Now, she runs the Baytree Centre. It's a charity that supports vulnerable women and girls here in this area. And we're going to speak to her about some of her own and their experiences. Hi, Ksenia. Hi. Nice to see you. How nice are you? Nice to see you. I'm Thanks good. Thanks for meeting me. Thank you. Has, you know, the, the recent stories about the Met and their reputation, have you noticed that having an impact? Well, of course, especially with this area, I think it was much um, more, well, it just felt really close to heart, really. Um, I definitely know from my own personal experience that I don't go out um, after dark at all. What more do the Met need to do, do you think, to restore the trust that women in London have in them? I think there needs to be a, like a, a single system and a, a very uh, easy to access a system of support and it needs to be um, talked about more and shared uh, with the people with the community.